Hey everybody, welcome back to part 2 of whatever this series is, the series where I tackle procedural animation inside of Unity 3D. The past few days I've mostly been bug fixing, um, just learning more about Unity's animation rigging and Final IK, and then learning how to implement a creature that had more than two limbs, which wasn't pretty hard, it just turned out a little more than questionable. Hey, you'll, you'll see what I mean. I started off with like a little list of things to do, and the first one I decided on was making the, the feet stick to the ground pretty much consistently, like all the time, because they tend to float around and whatever. Um, so I, I mess, mess around with that, I fixed it for the most part, and, uh, oh by the way, this guy's name is Chicken now. That's, uh, that's Cannon. I played around with the constraint I was using on his body to give him some movement based on the position of his feet, and I, I decided it wasn't really what I needed, it didn't really give me the customization I wanted. Um, so the first thing I did was allow it to change the offset dynamically cute. depending on where his feet was at. Okay, so we're gonna want to have this checked. I mean, <laughs> it's working, just not the way I wanted it to. But then I was like... You know, I should learn about some other constraints. You know, I might as well read about them because Unity has all of them listed on their, their documentation. So I did. I learned about some pretty cool ones and I ended up using this one, the transform override constraint. I tried out some of the other constraints, but ultimately I decided that none of them did what like I wanted them to or they weren't doing what I was expecting they were going to do. So I decided to make my own form of movement for the body instead of relying on constraints alone. So my method, the way I went about it was I made an empty game object and then I put a little cube in there so I could see what it was doing. Um, and then the idea was just use the transform override constraint um, on the body, like the base of the rig. Um, then set the source as the that empty game object and then the rest would sort itself out. Um, basically using like a sine wave and some stuff like that. And it gave me access to like uh, smoothing it out, which that, the other one didn't have, you know, speed of it, rotation, and just being way more customizable overall and chaining it to what I want when I want. It was pretty cool. Um, it works really well actually. So yeah, it looks great. You go in there. You don't like that? Move. I said go. Yeah, that's right. Keep going. Don't stop. Some people these days, man. He's got quite the trek ahead of him. I'm waiting, man. I'm waiting. Um, but then I let an intrusive thought win. I, I randomly decided, you know, I should add some camera zoom. I think I was thinking about Gary's mod while I was uh, making this, and I was like, you know, I, I want to be able to zoom in on this guy and just look at him. I think this guy's really, he's doing good. I think he's putting in uh, some good effort. But I don't think he's putting in 110%. Get your up here. Right now. What are you fucking waiting for? Huh? You fucking waiting for. I said, get your ass up here. That's what I thought. Get the fuck out of here. And then I let another intrusive thought win and I added camera shake, even though I, I don't need it right now. But it looks pretty cool. And then I added some really basic particles for when he stomps around, um, just so it gives it a little bit more punch. Uh, but they look pretty good. I'm pretty happy with them. The next thing in my notes here is um, at 12.36 a.m. Uh, it says watching Sebastian League. Uh, so I guess whatever that means. Um, it probably just ended up making me feel more inadequate though, so I don't know why I decided to put myself through that, but I'm sure it was entertaining. After that, I was getting pretty tired of the free cam, because, you know, I want to be part of the action. I want to be up close and personal, and just as close as I can get to him. Just like me and your mom. But yeah, that's just my way of saying I added a player controller. I just stole the code from my old underwater project and worked pretty seamlessly. It's just a rigid body controller, but yeah, pretty seamless. The first time I hit that play mode button, I was walking around with chicken right there. It felt like I was part of the camera crew for Walk With Dinosaurs, bro. I'll, I'll tell you, man, he's he's big. He's a big guy. Yeah, it's pretty intimidating when you're just walking around him and he's stomping everywhere and your your camera's going crazy. It's shaking, it's wobbling, and then he's throwing these square particles everywhere that God knows what they are. I don't even know if I know. Does he know? I don't know. But he's throwing, he's just throwing shit everywhere and it's just, it's scary, but it's cool. And after I was like in there with Chicken inside that world, just walking around with him, I realized he's probably pretty lonely. So I decided to tackle the next objective that I had, which was making a creature that had more than two limbs. So I started modeling this little dude, or I guess in this case, uh, he's a pretty big dude. He's pretty big. Um, and look at this. I use a Bezier curve for his leg. I've never done that before. It's pretty cool. Uh, he looked a little empty on top, so I gave him like a party hat originally, uh, but I didn't really like it. So I, uh, I gave him a finger with a, yeah, just a full finger. Mm. Yeah, by the way, his name is Reed. Uh, my girlfriend named him, but I think it fits him pretty well. He looks like a reed. Yeah, I think his beautiful gaze is like his best feature. You know, I could just 
I could just get lost in it, you know, just stare at it so easily, just forever and like ever. And um, <clears throat> I intended to use Boink Kid to um, make his finger wiggle around a little bit, but I never got around to it. So his his fingers just kind of like a it's kind of like paralytic. It just sits there. It doesn't do anything. But maybe one day I'll put that in there. From there, I just start setting him up in Unity. Didn't have too many problems there. I did realize that um, I don't think Unity's animation rigging package is really set up for, uh, I guess, rigs like this with a, a ton of bones. I couldn't really get it to work well. Uh, maybe you can, I just couldn't. So I decided to go with Final IK and some of their solvers. And uh, yeah, this guy, he kind of grosses me out sometimes. Like I just see him walking around or just like, just being weird, like just like in noodles or something. It's kind of weird. Oh, and here's another funny bug. Um, sometimes like a pair of legs, like the, the front left and the back right, like um, the ones that move together, right? They go back and forth, but sometimes get stuck. Like only one pair would, the other one wouldn't. And the pair that got stuck wouldn't be able to move because the other two limbs weren't ever grounded. But then on the flip side, the limbs that were moving never stopped moving and they never, con never were considered grounded because the other two were always grounded. So it's like, oh, I should keep moving. So it, it never considered them grounded, so the back ones can never move. It was pretty weird, pretty funny, it was an easy fix. I basically just told each foot to tell its like dependent foot, um, or the opposing foot, when it was allowed to take a step. Um, so it's just a boolean, so if it's not checked, then it can't move. Simple as that. So basically when one hits the ground, I tell the other one it can move, and then back and forth, back and forth. I know that I just stopped working on this project, like, last night. But it feels like I haven't been here in like three years. I think the next thing to do is to make it so when they are idling, their limbs go in their default positions. I want to try to do this without looking at any resources. Something I knew about but I just hadn't done yet was resetting the pose of the IK when it was idling, just so it looks more natural so it kind of goes back to its default state. He's not happy with where he's at. Um, it was really easy to do and it worked pretty well. It took a little bit of tweaking, but it looks good, honestly. It works, works pretty good. And then I made Reed like two times faster. Uh, he's way scarier now. He's terrifying. Yeah, he's pretty bad. And then I added the, the ability to like adjust the step length, which was in there originally, but I commented out the code because it didn't work very well. Um, so now I can change the stride of any of these guys. They can go as far as they want or as short as they want. Doesn't matter how long their legs are, you know? You go 20 meters in the, the distance. I don't, I don't care. Got small legs, go 20 meters, go one meter. I don't care, it's up to you, man, it's up to you. And then I was getting really annoyed by like his his noodle legs. So I messed around with the rotation constraints inside of Final IK for like a long time. And I kind of sort of got what I wanted, but I don't really understand them enough to get like the perfect result. So I'll have to mess around with it more, but I'm sure it's possible. I just, I just don't know enough. So yeah, not really a positive way to end the video, I guess, because I didn't really do much. But I mean, it's a good learning experience. I, I made, I made this guy kind of scary but again still just the tip of the iceberg there's so much more to learn here and so much more to look into and i'm sure with a lot more tweaking and some reading i could get the result that i like actually want and like what i'm looking for but it, it takes a lot of time especially since i have no clue what i'm doing so as of right now i don't know how much more i'll be messing with this project i'll probably come back to it every once in a while but as of right now i'm pretty happy with what i learned um so yeah hopefully you enjoyed me uh creating this this monstrosity or whatever this thing is